It's just some man. What the bird is barbecuing. Gage okay, Bronies, it is the Verd, back with you again, back with face cam because I guess this is kind of important. Um, basically, we're here for the semi-finals of the NPL Miners. Tampa Frogadiers are currently 8-0 and with a plus 32 differential, which is just freaking insane. And before anything else, yes, I'm aware. I've had a haircut, I've had to shave, I have a wedding tomorrow. And apparently, you're meant to look good for weddings, and apparently... They weren't a big fan of my beard and my hair, so I had to get trimmed down and look like a 17 year old again. But don't worry, I'm gonna grow the beard back to be like not ridiculously long, just a good solid growth, and not like a freaking baby face killer. But yeah, regardless, we're gonna get into this one. So obviously, the stakes are pretty high. If I won this game, I automatically made it into majors. If I lost, I would have to go into a third place playoff game to make it into majors. So winning was crucial, and we're up against Mono. Last time we played him, we 6 0 him, but obviously, that was last time. It's not gonna is influential this time obviously he's gonna bring a bit of a different team so i need to prepare for that for sure but if you guys are hyped for this match make sure you like that video subscribe all that good shit but let's just get into this so last time against mono uh one thing i did have that was really solid against him was his buzzword was able to stop his um his side dog over one thing i found was that bandit outrage is doing a little bit too much of my liking so i changed around the 72 attack evs into defense so i'm not hitting as hard against this team but i'm able to deal with bandit doggo just fine now uh if he does bring bandit again he may bring a different set i don't really know but i kind of have to deal with that set um as other doggo sets i feel the rest of my team can deal with uh, mainly celesteela if it is a mixed attacking set with hp flying i'm gonna have to go on a celesteela to kind of deal with that but regardless um three attacks i was very tossing up between power up punch and bulk up decided to go with power up punch because against curse lax it is more effective in the long run um this thing is one of my main curse lax checks the plus side, I guess, of Curse Likes, as you'll see from the rest of my team, is that they have ways to deal with it, but Buzzle's main job is just to come in, do some work. It is still outspeeding Heatran, so I can just go for power up punch against that too. Rocking the Thunder Punch this time for that Jellicent. Even with no attack investment, I'm getting off like a clean 35%, so being able to chip that thing down is going to be really important uh, in this matchup. But yeah, very uh, very excited to see what a Buzzle can do this matchup. I think it is a very integral member of my team, so I don't want to try and lose it too early, but you know what? Whatever happens, happens. But moving on, we do have Bailey back again now this set was kind of wild i'll admit it was kind of wild i was thinking about it and i was like well every time i brought this thing one i was expected like a um a defensive spread so why not go like really aggro aggressive with it and decided to go with a taunt set with enough speed to basically outspeed min speed mandibus because the photo is going to bring mandy i can probably he i don't think he's going to run speed investment in mandibus didn't feel like he was going to run speed investment in jealous and either just felt like they were two pokemon that he didn't really need to run that much speed investment in, but uh, regardless, Lumberry is there because Jellison likes to toss around Scald as well as will -Lewis, so being able to do with both of those is fantastic. Uh, knockoff, obviously, adamant knockoff does so much to Mono's team, and uh, Pursuit's really nice just to trap and kill things, and then Poison Jab just for that Bulu, making sure it just gets the hell off of my screen. But yeah, this is a pretty straightforward mark, just trying to outspeed his walls and bust through them as hard as it can. Next up, we have this Mew set. Basically, it's the same Mew set I brought last time, but I'm actually going to talk to you about why I brought this Mew set. Uh, so it is a nasty plot 3 attack set. All you saw last time was Shadow Ball. Uh, it, it does have Focus Blast plus Ice Beam. The basic premise of this Mew is that after setting up a nasty plot, um, it can just literally rip his team apart. The only thing that really deals with this Mew set is his Snorlax, and that's why I'm running the Phytinium Z Focus Blast. Yes, it's a risk running Focus Blast over Aura Sphere, but because of the damage output, it means that even an Assault Vest Snorlax or a Curse Lax set gets pretty much decimated by Focus Blast. Like Z Focus Blast at plus 2 of a modest Mew does an absolute crap ton. And that's kind of what I need, because like I said, Curse Lax is annoying, so being able to have one way to absolutely bust straight through it, that's kind of something I want. So basically on a turn that you might want to go for rest, I can go to Mew, he sleep talks a turn, worst case scenario, he body slams me, but regardless, I should be able to nasty plot up and get rid of that thing. So that should be really nice, and then Ice Beam is just coverage for Mandibus. Don't really have the coverage for Sizzle, but then again, I do have Tox Effects plus Celesteela, so it's not like I'm devoid of Sizzle checks. Uh, speaking of that, this set was probably one that was very controversial with a lot of people that I talked to them about. Um... I felt it was a really strong set in the matchup. Uh, basically, the premise of the Celesteela was it was bulky enough to deal with Bulu plus Scizor. However, it was also able to run the Autonomize set with just 92 speed being enough to allow it to outspeed Jolly Doggo. And that meant that if he didn't bring any Scarf mods, I could literally just uh, clean up his team with Autonomize with the Beast Boost, design the Celesteela specifically to be able to just have more special attack than defense so that we get that special attack and Beast Boost, but still have the bulk to be able to deal with his team. 
Um, really good coverage for the majority of this team. Basically, if I just get rid of like things like Jellicent, Snorlax, Mandibuzz, it can literally just clean up. So that was the kind of aim, I guess, for the Celesteela, was to wall things, but also potentially be a late game win con. Now this set, I was really proud with when I thought of it. Uh, basically, Zerkatry gets dual screens and it's amazing. I've seen other people use this in the past, and what really appealed to me about this was a lot of the things that Mono switches in against me, uh, like Zerkatry, if it sets up a screen, can deal with like Dragology, I can just set up a light screen, then go out to Pex or even Celesteela, even Mew and just wall out the Helen back if it goes into Doggo and I set up a Reflect, then I can, well actually if I set up a light screen and it goes out to Doggo, then I can go out to Buzzball and not fear the HP flying as much if he does have it, um, which would be really nice, but then I could also just go for the Reflect and uh, Buzzball could just wall a standard Doggo set regardless. Uh, Vault Switch and Dazzling Gleam is basically all the coverage I really needed. I was tempted to run HP Fire, but at the same time, if I get up the Reflect against Sizzle, it's much more effective, because then I can just go out to uh, my Toxapex here, which is a Haze set. I'm running enough Special Attack, basically, to the point where Dragology with 252 HP cannot set up a sub on me. Really weird uh, range to hit, but it does work out really nicely. Um, it worked really nicely in the mocks and whatnot. But yeah, Haze is just really important. Shuts down uh, SD Sizzle, shuts down Curse Lax especially is... The main reason why I have it there, so I can just go into this, haze up, and then double out to say like Buzzwall um, on the potential curse or potential body slam, take it, and then you know go from there. So really solid team. I felt really confident with it um, for sure. I feel the matchup is very even, but obviously we beat them last time. I felt really good. My run's been amazing in the minors. I'm hoping I can continue this and get the win to get myself into majors. So fingers crossed, guys. Let's jump into that battle. Alright guys, so here we are. This is it, the big one. Um, I was probably more nervous for this game than I have been for any game so far in the minors because it was just like, if I win, it's such a huge freaking deal. So I really wanted to perform. But regardless, Mono's team is kind of lit. Like, I mean, it's a very scary team. Uh, Mega Sizzle is like obviously a big issue, but I do have a lot of ways to deal with it. Tran, I obviously have my pecs to deal with that. And all of the things that he brought, I basically had ways to deal with. So I wasn't too worried. Lax was a little bit of an issue, but... I was kind of glad I didn't bring Mandibuzz. Uh, it's really nice for my Buzz Ward to be able to break through and have to deal with that. Um, and yeah, he didn't really bring uh, like anything else that I was really worried about. He didn't bring Raichu. Like, I was always thinking like Nasty Plot Raichu could be a bit of an issue to my team, but fortunately, Mono chose not to bring it. So I felt pretty good about this. Uh, lead matchup wise, um, I felt pretty good leading with Buzz Ward. Like, nine times out of ten, Buzz Ward is a pretty uh, solid lead against the majority of Mono's team. So. I, I just lead off with that, but he leads off with Tran, and I'm like, well, I, I could bluff EQ, but I'm just going to double into Toxapex just to see what he wants to do, as he does go Jelly. So that, that's fine. Um, I, I go into my uh, Muck as he goes for Taunt. Now, uh, at this point, I was contemplating switching out, making, making a, a bluff of the fact that maybe he uh, would expect that, you know, it could be a different set or whatnot, but then I was like, you know what? There's a really good chance I outspeed this Jealous and like, if he doesn't run any speed investment, Jellison actually has, I believe, less speed than Mandibuzz, so unless he's running a good whack of speed investment to outspeed my Muck, I'm going to be able to outspeed him, drop this knockoff, and get a kill. But I was also thinking that maybe he's just going to double out to Sizzle now. So I was tempted to double in a Celestealer. I'm really glad I didn't because I do choose to stay in. He does Willow me. The Lumberry pops, and I can go straight for that knockoff, that adamant knockoff to knock out that Jellicent right off the bat. So turn three, I was feeling pretty good. He goes Doggo, I go into Daddy Brolic, and he reveals the HP flying, and that does an absolute crap ton, because he's a life orb, and at this point, I was like, okay, like, I had to, I had to have seen this coming, but at the same time, I guess the way that I looked at it was, that was, uh, a risk, I, I knew he would probably be packing the HP flying, I didn't think he'd go for it straight away, because if I just stayed in with my Muck then and clicked Knock Off, that would have done, like, an obscene amount of damage to Doggo, and I don't know if it was worth the risk for Mono, to uh, not go for Thousand Arrows there, so that's kind of why I went Swallow, I was like, well, you know, like, it's a risk not to do it, because if I stay in, um, and you don't click Arrows, then I'm going to basically get killed uh, with Muck, so uh, I thought maybe I'd just play the safe play Buzzwall, I could have risked Muck there, because looking at the rest of the team, Muck doesn't do a whole lot against him, so maybe potentially I should have just stayed in there, but each to their own, uh, he makes a really good read here, I decided to go sell a Steeler, because I'm like, well, as I said, it's a really important one for me to keep around as he does go straight for the Thousand Arrows. And I'm like, okay, fair play. I'm going to go back into my uh, Buzz Wall because, yeah, I figured to go for Thousand Arrows again. Now, at this point, I was like, okay, I'm chilling at about 25% and Doggo is putting in, like, a lot of work right now. But the only plus that I can see from this is he's taking a lot of Life Orb damage. So I I'm trying to think of my best way of kind of dealing with this Doggo set right now. And my best way, I think, is just going hard Celesteela predicting the HP flying this time. Because this time, it seems 
Like, it has to be his play. Like, he doesn't really have much more of a play. As he's gonna go out to Snorlax, as I am gonna drop a Hidden Power. Now, I actually have a Hidden Power ground there because I was looking at his team, and uh, at that point, like, Celestia obviously could have just dropped an Air Slash for free. And I could have done that, but I felt like, you know, this was a good opportunity for Mono to try and go out to his Heatran. Um, as Heatran can take both his Celestia's stabs. Yes, there is the threat of Earthquake, but regardless, I felt like, you know, Hidden Power ground could be a good middle play. As Lax does come in, and I'm like, well, my play here is to try and go into Buzzwall, because the way I saw it was, he's seen the hidden power. If he is cursed, Lax, I can go into Buzzwall, get up a roost, and plus one body slam doesn't do too much to me, because I am so goddamn bulky. So, I do try and make that cheeky play into Buzzwall, but he is actually a soul vest. Um, is able to knock me out. However, this does allow my Zerkatry to get up a reflect, and I'm like, oh, this is so good. Like, Zerkatry is literally zero. I'm gonna go for the Volt Switch, as he does choose to go to Heatran, and I'm like, oh, this is good. I did a lot to Heatran, so I know he's offensive. I go into Mew. And from the damage that my uh, Zerkatry did, I know that my Mew can knock out this Heatran with Splice. And that was really good, because if I knock out this Heatran with um, a Focus Blast, that'd be really nice. I was tempted, though, to uh, potentially go for... Sorry, I just like, ripped off a bit of a scab. And just good. Um, I was very tempted just to go for the Z Focus Blast here, because at this point, his best switch into Mew was like leaving in Heatran, sending it Snorlax to go into Sizzle, any of those I'd be more than happy just dropping a Z-Focus Blast on. But I decided not to because I'm like, well, at this point Heatran can't kill me with anything, and it's a it's a good chance that I'm going to hit this Focus Blast and just knock out this Heatran. It means that he wouldn't be able to get rocks up and that'd just be phenomenal, so here we go! And yeah, um, I, I decide to uh, double out the Toxic Specs. I wasn't feeling great at this point because my buzzwall was gone, which was my main way of like breaking down things like dog and whatnot. So I was like racing through my head, being like, "Okay, what can he do here to um to like what what can I do here to end up winning in the end game?" And the way I saw it, looking at his team was, I knew that Doggo was lifeful, I knew that Snorlax, um, and I knew that Sizzle obviously wasn't gonna be scarfed. So it meant that if Heatran wasn't scarfed and if Bulu wasn't scarfed, then Celesteela had a chance with the um Autonomous set. So. I just go for Scald here as he goes for Rocks, and because of that, I know Heatran now is not Scarf. So all that's left to know is Bulu. He goes hard into Bulu here. Really risky play there, because I can obviously just drop uh, the fattest of Scalds. For some reason, it is not showing it on uh, Showdown. There we go. Should be kind of showing it now. As I actually snag the burn, and I'm like, I see lefties, and this is the information I wanted, guys. What this means is, at this point, um... Celesteela has a very realistic chance of winning. All I have to do is get rid of his Snorlax, and then after an Autotomize, Air Slash will knock out Bulu. Uh, Flamethrower will knock out Scizor. Uh, Air Slash will knock out the uh, Doggo, and I have HP ground for the Heatran. So basically, I have all the tools I need to sweep his team. All I have to do is get rid of that Snorlax. And Bulu's burned here, so I'm going to choose to actually go hard out to my Muck, because uh, I didn't think he could do that much to me. He is going to actually go for the sub, but I'm like, oh, this could be really obnoxious, but... At the same time, Reflect is still up for a couple of turns, so you know maybe I can just burn that out. I am just going to go for um, the P-Jab here, uh, breaking that. And I was like, well, there's a very good chance that he could just go out to Sizzle here. And I was very tempted just to go for the um, the Knock, as he does go for another sub. And I actually go for Taunt, uh, just to kind of stop the subs from happening. was kind of sick of that shit. Um, means that like Bulu is going to stay at a good range of health, but at the same time, like, he can't really do much to me other than like Nature's Madness. Um... Uh, and I do go for the uh, P jab here, and I was like, "All right, well, like, wh what's the end game from here?" I figure if he goes Sizzle, I have a lot of switch ins here, and if he goes in a Snorlax, it's also fine. I just drop the knockoff, and I get the. It was actually banned. I thought it was AV. It was actually banned. It's not like goddamn. No wonder my Buzzword didn't stand a chance. I'm gonna go for the P jab, and basically he's gonna go for a turn knock me out, but that doesn't matter because at this point Snorlax is well within range. I'm gonna go into Zerkatry here. I'm gonna go set up my reflect. He's going to EQ, which doesn't knock me out, but he's going to die to poison. And the stage is basically set. He goes into Doggo. And at this point, my best play is just sacking off Zerkatry. Because at this point, um, uh, Celestia comes in. So this this is the big moment, guys. Um, obviously, the first thing you're thinking of is, well, Bird, he's going to drop a Life Orb uh, 1,000 arrows on you. Then he's going to drop a Life Orb E speed. Then he has a Mega Scizor in the back, which will outspeed you and can drop a... Um, Adamant, Bullet Punch. 
let me break down this like, for you guys, because I did these calcs afterwards. Basically, you saw that Doggo's Thousand Arrows the first time did 40%. So under a reflect, it's going to do half of that. So I'm going to take 20% from a reflect. So from 42 down to 22. E speed maximum damage from like a life orb doge is doing about like 8%. And that's under reflect, so 8%. So that leaves me with 14%. The maximum damage that an adamant mega sizzle can get to me under reflect with a bullet punch is 9%. So I basically have game. It's basically, if I can get off this autonomize and I hit that air slash next turn, I take out Doggo, get my beast boost, uh, he sends in Heatran, HP ground, gone, beast boost, sends in Bulu, air slash, or flamethrower at that point because I'm a plus two, beast boost, sizzle comes in, beast boost. So at this point, all I have to do is autonomize and I win. Guys, we had the game. Um, like, it was, it was over. I, I did the calcs. If you want, I'll chuck them up on the screen while this recording's been going on, but I, I had it. It was, it was game over there. If I got up that autotomize without being critted, everything on Mono's team dropped. He had nothing that could come in and take on the coverage that my Celesteela had. Um, and so yeah, now we basically had a 93.75% chance there of making it to majors. And now we are in a bit of a dogfight here. The plus side, I guess, from this matchup right now is Toxapex is very good against the rest of his team. I have a Shookerberry, I'm under Reflect, so I know this hit is going to do absolutely nothing. So it does 22%, I can knock him out with the Ice Beam. Goodbye, Doggo. So the problem is though that I've just burned my um uh I've just burned my um what do you call it? Mm, words are hard. Uh, I just burned my sugarberry. I was just reading a comment somebody said in the chat here saying like he could have stored out reflect turns. Uh, I had I think two reflect turns left after the autonomize would have happened. Um, basically, then that means that I could have just gone for Air Slash. His only switch into Air Slash then was Heatran. And even after that, the fact of the matter is, he with 1000 arrows would be at 20%, and then it comes down to whether Life Orb, uh, E Speed, plus potentially Adamant Bullet Punch would do 20% to a max defense Celesteela. I'm not too sure. At the same time, I just, it's frustrating. <laughs> for sure. Because the other thing is, guys, even if those things had happened, he still would have been losing mods. And at the same time, like, I wouldn't have had to burn my Toxapex's um, Sugarberry Menting, meaning it would have checked either the Heatran's Earth Power that I'm about to take to the face here, um, or I could have just, you know, done other stuff. He goes into Sizzle, and I'm like, this is a really interesting choice. I did not expect him to go Sizzle. I fully expected Bulu, because I was like, well, uh, a Bulu would have it here, it's going to knock me out, and I'm going to have to go Hard Mew, back into Pex, and kind of scramble. But he actually chooses to Mega Evolve and going for um, SD, and I'm like, oh, okay. As you can see, sorry. I just want to point this out too. People saying that, yeah, he could have sort of reflect turns. You can see that from the time that I died, I have done three reflect turns. So I had five reflect turns. I can't see any possible way that Mono was able to stall out that many screen turns with his team. Celestia would have worn them down far too easily. So yeah, that, that, that comment's out the window. But regardless, he goes for an SD here. And he goes for a second one. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just going to drop a haze on you. Not, not today. And I was like, shit, we actually have a chance now. Because the thing is, I know Baloo is sub C. But at the same time, he has to see in order to... Oh, I was about to say succeed, but that just sounds really lame. Uh, what I wanted to do here was actually um, go hard into Mew. Because I figured there's no point of him saying in Mrs. or risking the skull burn. And if he goes Bulu, then I can either just go straight for the... Go for the Fightinium Z move. Because that way I'm just damaging Bulu to the point where I can take it out with Pex. Or, if he doubles from Bulu into Scizor, expecting like a Psychic move or whatnot, and then he knows BP can revenge me afterwards, I can go for a Fighting MZ move there, and we can Sizzle to the point where Toxpex takes out. But, I decided, I think, just to go for a Scald here to play it safe, or I just go for a cover. I do just go for Scald, because, like, I get a crit, and damaging Bulu is really nice. Um, at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm getting health back, he can Leech Seed me, but he thinks he can sub up, but I have Ice Beam, and I have enough Special Attack, like I said, to break subs. So, Bulu can't exactly saw me 1v1 here, so I'm like, alright, this is actually looking promising. He leech seeds, I get off my ice beam, but there's a huge amount, I'm like, holy shit, we might actually do this. 
Like, he's getting a lot of health back. We might actually be able to stop this Bulu. And I'm like, okay, as long as he... Uh, if he had Woodham, it would have been better there, I think. I think it was still to die, but, like, I don't know. As I'm able to Ice Beam, I realize now, I'm like, okay, shit, I'm going to have to go for Recover. Because as much as I want to just attack him here uh, and get rid of him, Mew can't 1v1 the Sizzle. I have to Recover here or else I'm going to lose. So I click Recover. It sucks, though, because I'm giving Bulu, like, way too much health back here, and it just sucks, like, so much. Like I said, if I go on harder to Mew, I think I would have been in a much better position. He is going to Horn Leech again, and I'm like, do I want to recover again here? I do choose to recover, because in the long run, guys, I know that 1v1, I can do that. And what it comes down to, really, is my matchup against the Sizzle. That's the thing that I need to be beating right now, because outside of Grassy Terrain, I can handle this Bulu. As he's going to go out to Sizzle, I actually have to go out to Mew here, and it came down to whether Mew could take the BP, and I, I can't take BP. Not without, um, not without Reflect. So, I was like, damn, I'm going to have to go out to Pex. I'm going to have to go for the Recover. And it became abundantly clear what I had to do in order to win. He went for Knock Off, and I went for Recover. Oh, sorry, I went for Haze. And he's going to SD and I go for Recover. And, so I'm just going to get it back up to him at full health. At this point, I realize what I have to do is basically hit Scald and get the burn on Scizor. If I burn Scizor, I can recover Stall it and Haze and beat it that way and wear it down. And then with Bulu, it's the same system where because it's burned, I might be able to just Ice Beam Stall it out. And that's going to be, you know, fantastic. Um, it's not exactly the way that I wanted to win this battle, but it's definitely looking like the most likely way that I'm going to have to win. So basically what it comes down to, unfortunately, after literally having the game um, in the palm of my hand, doing exactly what I needed to do in order to win. Uh, it all comes down if we can get that 30% burn chance on this Scizor, as knockoff's gonna go off. I'm gonna go for the Scald burn, get a crit, but no burn. And guys, unfortunately, I, I, I said it in the chat, I just couldn't catch a break. I, I just couldn't catch a break there. I, I don't think I could have played that any better. In the circumstances, the way that we both played, I did exactly what I needed to do in that battle to get myself into a winning position against Mono. Uh, unfortunately, crits are a factor in the game. There's not really much you can do about it. Uh, it sucks a lot because uh, it was a really good chance to win. And uh, it was a really good chance to show that, you know, the 6-0 against Mono wasn't just a fluke. Like, I could perform that well a second time. And it would have been a 3-0 win in our favor. But unfortunately, these things happen. That's just the game that we play. And, I mean, congrats to Mono. He has officially made mages, as has uh, Rob Jr., of the Gotham City Gold Lurk, so you know, congrats to those guys, but I just, I, I couldn't help having like a really sour taste in my mouth after this battle, because it, it's not that I felt that Mono didn't deserve to win by far, like he's a phenomenal battler, so he deserves it, but for me, it was that I don't necessarily think I played bad enough to deserve to lose, if that makes sense, like, I definitely could have played a bit better in some circumstances, especially late game, uh, if Toxapex maybe had Sludge Bomb over, uh, Ice Beam, then I definitely would have won because I could have just knocked out Bulu and then I could have just walled the Sizzle basically from the get-go. That would have been fine. I had Mew as a sack to get my health back up if I needed to and then literally all I needed was one burn on Sizzle. Could have worn it down and, you know, won the game uh, for sure. But at the same time, it's like, that's... <sighs> he has mons like Dragalge and Mandibuzz where those moves were better to hit them with. And... I don't regret bringing Ice Beam, but still was good at damage Bulu. I could have 1v1 Bulu, I feel, with Toxapex in that situation. So, uh, I didn't really regret it at all. I basically, once the Grassy Terrain wore out, um, I was able to wear him down quite easily. So, it literally just came down to that one turn and that one crit, um, which definitely cost me the game. Because, at the same time, like, although he might have been able to play around it, at the same time, he was losing at least two to three Pokemon from doing it because of Celesteela. So... I feel that in that situation, it just really sucks because I I don't feel I could have done anything better, guys. I literally did everything I could have to make mages there. And, and so we go to 8-1 and one for miners this season. Um, with a plus 30 differential, really sucks that's our loss for the season. But there is a silver lining, guys. We have a third place playoff match against Magic or uh, David, coach of the FC Poplio. If we can beat him, um, then we will book our place into Majors for next season. So really crucial game, massive game. If we can get the result, that would be just huge for us. So I'm just going to go out there. I'm going to do my best and hopefully we can get the result. But yeah, I'm sorry that I let you guys down. I honestly, I, I tried. I had him exactly where I wanted him and uh, these things happen. But that's going to do it for me. Hope you guys have enjoyed. My name is Avert. I'm out of this bitch.